Hey everyone, so I am starting a new reading vlog update thing. These aren't super vloggy, they're just random check-ins with what I'm currently reading throughout a random point of time. Uh, but I figured I've read a lot of things since my last update, so I would pick up where I left off and bring you guys up to where I am now. From where I left off in the last video, I have finished these two books. These were the two that I was in the middle of at the end of my last update. This was the book that we were reading for the page turners, and um, I... Okay, so thoughts on this. I gave it four stars. But let me explain all of my thoughts around this book. So I've been talking a lot recently that I think that I've finally, I don't want to say moved on or aged out of YA because I think that's an ageless genre. I've been the biggest advocate of preaching that YA is not just for teenagers. Um, but I have basically reached the conclusion that I just am really not connecting with the teenage mind anymore. Maybe I have finally matured. It only took me 30 years, but here we are. So I still like the pacing of YA and I still generally like um, really cool story concepts that get introduced and I've just accepted that I need to kind of remove myself from the teenager mind to appreciate the story, if that makes sense. And this is one of those books. So when I started this, I was so impressed and it was just so good. It was set up exactly like a true crime podcast or a true crime like documentary where we're kind of like picking up the pieces of um, what we're exploring in this story. So we're meeting all of the characters in the town, we're understanding our surroundings, and we're getting a little bit of backstory of what the crime was. And in this book we're following a girl who is making it essentially her senior thesis to reopen a murder that happened five years ago that was somewhat closed, and she just really doesn't believe that the killer is actually the killer. So this is basically where my belief has to be suspended, because I am just starting to accept that a lot of YA books will forever have teenagers doing things that realistically teenagers really can't do. And I've always known that, but I feel like I've just gotten way more critical of stories that have like 16 year olds who are solving crimes that police who have been in the field for 50 years can't do. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's just once you suspend your belief, just go along and have a fun ride. And that's kind of where my mentality is with YA, where I just, I've accepted it and that's just where I am. So this follows a girl who goes through the town and basically reinvestigates this murder. And she is a ballsy, feisty chick who is just like not laying down on this case and really believes in what she's doing. And she basically gets um, the brother of the convicted murderer in on this because he really thinks his brother is innocent as well. And it's them basically going through and solving this crime. And my issue was all of the things that she started to do just were not legal, first of all. That's one of the main things. Every time she would, like, break into somebody's house to find evidence, I'm like, girl, you can't do that. I understand you're trying to solve a murder, but now you're a criminal for doing that. And you can't just, like, magically be expunged from the law because you solved the murder. Like, you did some illegal stuff, too. So those were the things that I just kind of had to, like, set aside and just enjoy the fun ride of a book. I had a blast with this book, though. Once I got over that weird mental hump, it was so fun. It was really fast-paced. It was twist after twist after twist. Like, I thought that I called the twist, and I kind of did about the one character, but then it was like, but wait, there's more! And it just kind of kept happening. And I honestly, I had no idea what was coming. So so it was a really fun ride of a book. So I'm giving it four stars. It was highly enjoyable. It's been a long time since I've read a YA book that actually kept me like on the edge of my seat the whole time. So this was really fun to read as a group too because we were all speculating the whole time. So I did finish this, gave it four stars. Um, I also finished The Blacksmith Queen. Um, so I was explaining this book in my last update video and I was not very far into it at that point and my feelings haven't really changed, which is exciting. I'm describing this as cozy fantasy. <laughs> it's like comedy high fantasy with some sexy times mixed in. And it was a ride of a book. It was super fun. It follows a lot of characters. Like the cast of characters in this are all hilarious and enjoyable to read from. And I don't even know how to explain the plot of this. It's basically high fantasy that does not take itself too seriously and we're following some really badass women who are really tough and muscular and that was refreshing to read from. I really liked reading about not even close to the damsel in distress, but like the woman who beats the shit out of her enemies with her hammer. And I was just like, yes, I love this. So if you're looking to get into adult fantasy, but it's intimidating to you, 
start with some cozy versions. I, I'm coining this term. That term does not really exist. But this is high fantasy where you kind of get introduced to like a political system in a world, but it's like super short and fun and hilarious. And there's a lot of swearing and a lot of just um, lighthearted banter throughout the whole thing. So I gave this three stars. Do I think the story itself was actually that great? Not really, but it was just really refreshing to read a story like this amidst all of the really heavy fantasy that I've read. So this was definitely one that I highly recommend picking up. The next book that I sat down and read is A Man and His Cat Volume 1. This book, I know a lot of you guys recommended this to me because you guys know that I'm a cat lady. I work at an animal rescue with hundreds of cats. I have three cats now. That happened quickly. Um, I am just a cat person and I fully embrace it. Dude, cats are freaking awesome. They're adorable. This is a very short little manga about an old man who walks into a pet store and basically adopts the unwanted ugly cat in the store. And it's little like one page chapters of little instances of their experience of this cat coming home with him and the cat constantly doubting himself because he is like the unchosen cat so he constantly is putting himself down and like worrying that the man is going to return him and it's the man learning how to take care of a cat and all of the fun antics that you get into as a cat owner like there's just one page panels of like, I got you a cat bed. And he looks and the cat's sitting in a box or the man being like, I'm going to go into this room and you can't come with me. And there's paws under the doorway of the cat being like, why are you not including me? So it's just really, really cute little like one or two page snapshots of life with a cat that is so relatable if you're a cat person. So I am so glad that I got this. This is the cute. I've already like flipped back through it and he's so cute. Like, the cat is so cute. Like, look at look at his little face. He's so cute. He's on the back too, just doing cat things. It's adorable. Highly recommend. Okay, let me pull up Goodreads because I'm starting to lose track of where I am. Ooh, I finally got my hold in of Dissenter on the Bench by Victoria Ortiz. This was a very like short um, biographical type of story about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who I have been wanting to read, I know a lot about RBG, but I wanted to actually read a book like dedicated to like what she did. And this is kind of just a very short glimpse into her lifetime, but it focused a lot on a lot of like her high profile cases or a lot of the cases that really defined who she was and all of the amazing things that she did for women's rights and just like individual stories of what she did and the cases she took on and why she took them on. I highly recommend it. If you're at all interested, this is a very easy, digestible, probably written for a younger audience uh, story about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her life's work. Ooh, okay, while I'm on the same topic, I downloaded this book on Inauguration Day because I really needed something that was just like women power because it was just, oh, it was a very exciting day for women and women's history and uh, exciting things. So I downloaded and listened to Modern Her Story and this is by Blair Amani and this is brilliant. This is a book that I wanna buy 5 million copies and I wanna put them in every single classroom in America. The actual title for it is Modern her story, Stories of Women and Non-Binary People Rewriting History. And it is a very short story, but it's essentially, um, like each page is a breakdown of a person who did something amazing for women and non-binary and gender fluid people in history. And it covers everything from like A-list celebrities to politicians to, um, girls who just stood up for their rights in their hometowns and um, anybody who influenced the LGBTQIA plus community and all of the impact that they've held. And it has, at the very end of it, it has like an, an index of important events um, in history that like changed laws and changed perspectives and um, did basically amazing things for um, women and non-binary people. And it was incredible. The foreword is written by Tegan and Sarah. They're one of the chapters in this book about what they've done for the lesbian community. And it's just, it's a book that I think everybody should read at this point. We're finally reaching a point in our country where this is not just like a taboo topic anymore. And kids need to learn about all these amazing things that all of these amazing people have done. So this covers everything from like the civil rights movement to Stonewall to the Million Women's March to just really cool badass things that women and gender fluid people have done. And it was just so cool. It was really freaking cool to read. So if you're gonna read any like nonfiction book, 
make it this one. And you can listen to it. It's a very short audiobook to listen to. And I feel like you're just going to be so inspired and so proud to be a woman if you're a woman or just anybody can take so much away from this book. So I highly, five stars, five amazing, wholesome, awesome stars. I love this book so much. I plan on rereading it later on in the year to make sure I remember everything because it really teaches a lot of stuff that's very important that is not taught in like public school systems. So five stars. Amazing. Okay. And the last book that I'm going to talk about in this section, because I had a lot of books to like wrap you guys up to this point, um, is this book. I read this whole book last night and I have so many things in my head this morning now. So this is an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. And if you saw me haul this book, you kind of understood like why I'm reading this now. Um, long story short, I have been following the Vlogbrothers since like the birth of YouTube. Like Hank and John Green are like some of the original internet stars. Um, and John Green went off to become a wildly successful YA author. And I've never really liked any of his books. Turtles All the Way Down is the only one that I actually like somewhat enjoyed. Um, and I've just accepted his writing style is not my style. So I kind of read off his brother's book as being the same thing, ignorantly, without even looking into it. Little did I know, this is adult sci-fi. It's completely different. And I've recently fallen back in love with Hank Green because he has become the Bill Nye of TikTok, and I adore him. He just makes TikToks where he answers science questions. So this is his book that came out two years ago now, and the sequel and the final book in this duet just released this past year, so I'm excited. I have my hold in for the second one in this because it's only these, it's only a duology, and the story is over. So I didn't know much about this going into it, and oh my god, it's so my type of sci-fi. First encounter type of sci-fi is like my favorite because I really like, if it's written very realistically, I love seeing how authors think that the world would react to a first encounter situation. So this follows a girl who um, stumbles upon like a 10 foot robot that just appeared in the middle of New York. And she makes a video about it and posts it on YouTube and it goes viral, like overnight, huge, because obviously it's an alien life form that just appeared. And she names him Carl and she just like vlogs with this robot thing that's just standing in the middle of Manhattan. And um, it goes viral. And little does she know that there are other Carls, as she named him, that appeared in cities all over the world. And it's basically following her as she deals with becoming instantly viral and instantly famous across the entire world because she technically was the first encounter with alien life forms to document it and everything. So this story more so focuses on her dealing with this fame and trying to figure out what's going on than it is about the actual alien part, but that is woven into the story as well. So if you're looking for kind of lighter sci-fi that isn't very science fiction-y, <laughs> like it's not very scientific, it's not very spacey, it focuses a lot more on the human dynamic, um, I'm gonna recommend this to you. But it reminded me so much of the Themis Files. Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nuval this is the exact same type of story, except this one is a lot more lighthearted. That one actually follows more of a scientific team who are working to discover what's going on. This basically follows like an internet celebrity who is dealing with uh, figuring this out and how she's dealing with that. Um, so this was a really interesting glimpse into how uh, governments and the world would react to a situation like this, which are my favorite type of sci-fi stories if it's done really realistically. And I feel like this is written in the century that we're in. Like, this is very much how it would happen. The internet would just take it by storm. There are endless groups who were assigned to figuring out all of the puzzles that this uh, robot thing kind of introduced. It was fascinating and it was fast paced and I loved every second of it. I gave it four stars. I can't wait for the second one because it kind of ended on a cliffhanger and it was intense. So that was the last book that I read recently to give you guys an update on. Hopefully I'll have more. Oh no, I started another book last night. God, I'm a reading machine right now. I started Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. This is a book that I've been wanting to read so badly since it came out two years ago. I'm losing track of time. I want to say last year, but my brain is also still stuck in 2020. So last year would be 2019. That's two years ago now. Um, this is a book that I've wanted to read because I've heard really good stuff about it, but it spoils other books. So I wanted to wait until I read The Secret History, which I did. If you guys watch my last reading update, I finally read The Secret History by Donna Tartt. And that is one of the murders that's discussed in this book. So Eight Perfect Murders follows a man who works at a mystery thriller true crime bookstore 
who wrote a list on his blog of um, eight perfect murders that are done in different books across the years. And um, an FBI agent basically contacts him and says that they have a serial killer who is replicating these eight perfect murders that he made on his blog. And she comes to interview him to basically help solve this case, but there's more than we see because he is a kind of nefarious character as well. And I basically wanted to read this really badly, but I know that it spoils um, the Secret History, which I desperately wanted to read. So I was waiting until I read that to finally get to this, and now I can finally read it. So I'm about halfway through this, and stuff is starting to be revealed, and it's getting very tense, and I love this type of story. I'm not a huge thriller person, but if it's dealing, like, with other book stuff and, like, other serial killer murdery stuff, I love it. And this is, like, everything that I love in a book. So, so far, so good. But I'm only halfway through. So hopefully by the time I give an update for this vlog, I will have finished it and I will have final thoughts for you. Okay. <sighs> I've been talking for way too long for this first half of the vlog. I'm gonna go keep reading and I'll check in later on in the week for you guys. Okay, it is significantly later in the week, which is how these vlogs go. In fact, I think it's been more than a week. I don't remember when I filmed that last clip. I do remember that I was in the middle of Eight Perfect Murders. So that's where I'm gonna pick up this part. <laughs> um, so I've since finished it. I gave it three stars. I know I was super gung-ho about it at the beginning and I liked the premise. I liked that it was introducing other murders to the serial killing, but I've since finished it and honestly, I don't remember much about it. So I gave it three stars. I don't know if I personally just lost interest in the story halfway through, which is entirely possible. So it might've been a me problem, but I feel like it had such a cool concept and premise that I feel like the plot reveals and the climactic moments should have like held up to how cool of a concept it was. And I feel like they just kind of ended up being like an average mystery type of plot line. I, I don't know. I gave it three stars. Um, and since then I have read three more books. This is going to be a lengthy reading vlog. Um, so I read American Queen by Sierra Simone. It's been a hot minute since I have jumped into romance in general, but specifically very spicy romance. And Sierra Simone is the queen of the written porn. <laughs> she just writes sex scenes so well. Like, I feel like authors after a certain point start to like recycle the same phrases and there's only so many ways you can describe sexual experiences. Sierra Simone just brings it every freaking time. So this is the first of, I think, a trilogy and it's a poly BDSM relationship. So if any of those are like red flags for you, maybe avoid this one, but she writes very kinky, mostly poly stories. And so I know what I'm signing up for when I get into her books. And this one was just so good. Uh, this follows the story of a woman who ends up in a relationship with the president of the United States and the vice president. It happened and it was great. I feel like she just sets the tone really well. Like the story opens with her walking down the aisle to marry the president. And instead of like a pocket square in his tux, he has her panties and the vice president is the best man sitting next to him. And he's got like hickeys all over his neck from the both of them. So that is the first scene that is introducing like where the book is ending up. And then we backtrack to the very beginning of the story where we see them meeting and falling in love with each other and each other and it was just a jolly old time. Like it's been a long time since a book has made me like clutch my pearls while I'm listening to it at work because yeah, that's the type of person I am. If you ever like pass me in a car, I'm generally not listening to like happy-go-lucky radio music. I am generally either listening to a serial killer podcast where they are dissecting a body or extremely graphic sex scenes. That's the type of person that I am. So interpret that as you will, but uh, it was, it was great. I gave it four stars. I can't wait to continue on with the rest of the series, but I needed to pick up the group read for the month of January, the, the romance read. And that was Wicked by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is one of my only unread JLA series at this point, and I've been so excited for it because I know this is one of her spicier series. A lot of people say this one is way steamier than a lot of her other stuff because I believe this one is technically classified as new adult. And what she's known for is a lot of YA paranormal romance, which is still steamier than the average YA romance. But um, this one follows young 20-somethings, which was appealing to me. And it's Faye, which is also appealing to me. And it's set in New Orleans. It's got a whole bunch of paranormal 
critters. Like, it's not just, like, one focus. There's a lot of things introduced into this. This was ultimately probably my least liked JLA book to date. I know, I know. I had really high expectations because I adore pretty much everything Armand Trout writes. Um, I feel like a lot of people got introduced to her through the Blood and Ash series, which is on a completely different tier than the rest of her books. So I've been kind of worried and kind of curious to see what people think about her previous stuff after that's their first impression of her and then going back to her backlist because her stuff, some of it's dated, some of it didn't age well, but a lot of it is just like very cringy, very doesn't take itself too seriously paranormal romance stories. I adore them. I fully admit that I don't think they're masterpieces as far as like literature goes, but they are always fun. This is the first time that I just couldn't set my standards aside to just enjoy it. I don't know why. Ren, I think, is my least favorite male lead of all of her so far. For some reason, he was just not appealing to me. Um, I liked, I what's her name, Ivy? Yeah, I liked Ivy. She was funky. Tink made the entire book. Um, and I don't necessarily love when side characters are what are keeping my interest. That's not really boding well for the rest of the story. I don't know. I just feel like I wasn't nearly as invested as I should have been for this. And it was pretty disappointing. I still gave it three stars. I still recommend it over a lot of other things because I still think that Armand Trout um, tells a really fun story and this was a cool concept. But I feel like even by the end of this book, when all of the big scenes were happening, I still didn't care like I should have, like I normally do with our books. I don't know what was off about it, but I gave it three stars. I'll probably continue on, but I'm not as excited as I normally am. Normally I binge through her series in like a couple days and it's been a couple days since I finished this and I'm not itching to get to the second book. <sighs> I don't know. It was slightly predictable. The characters just didn't do it for me like they normally do and I was disappointed. I'm sorry. But never fear, the next book that I read was a masterpiece. Um, so I finally started reading the Wicked Villain series by Katie Robert. So the first book in this is Desperate Measures and in case you guys didn't know, this is an indie romance series that is based off of Disney villains. So each book is a different relationship um, if like the villain had a love story. So this first book is Jasmine and Jafar and it was so good. Katie Roberts writes incredible BDSM dynamics. Without going into too much detail, she just, it's the first time I've read a BDSM dynamic and BDSM lifestyle scenes that are accurate to real life and are handled appropriately. It's not a damaging relationship. Yes, it's problematic. It's a story about Jafar. It's not going to be super realistic, but as far as the dynamic in the relationship went, safe words were established. Um, boundaries were established prior to anything. Um, aftercare was a thing. They go to the underworld, which is essentially a dungeon, like a, the local dungeon in the city, and it's handled exactly like how actual kink dungeons are run and how all of the scenes are set and how all of the play spaces are set up. It was so authentic and I'm so proud. <laughs> it's the first time that I've read a kinky book that I feel like is very real kink and it's handled appropriately. It was so good. It was so good. So I am going to immediately read through the rest of the series. I know the second book follows Hades, which is clearly going to be my favorite. You guys know that I love Hades and Persephone stories. This one is following Hades and Meg from Hercules, like the Disney movie. And you could see all of the Disney representation throughout the book. Like I'm pretty sure we saw Elsa getting flogged in the dungeon and I was just like, it was either Elsa or probably Cinderella. It was a very pale, icy blonde character. And I was like, was that Elsa getting flogged? I don't know, but if that's at all intriguing to you, I highly recommend this series, at least off of book one so far. But that is where I am with my reading as of right now. I'm kind of in the middle of a bunch of different things, but I will save that for the next reading vlog. But as of right now, that's my reading update. Um, let me know what you've been reading down in the comments, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next video.